Hey guys, welcome back to our No Table Saw Segmented Turning Challenge and welcome back to the Timbercon Turning Studio. In the last video, we made all of these rings using the best saw guide and a very simple cross-cutting jig to hold at the right angle. Now what we have to do is flatten all of these rings so we can actually glue them all together to form our bowl blank. And I really hope it doesn't explode. This here is a scroll truck that has a set of specialty jaws installed called cold jaws that will allow me to mount a wide range of different diameter rings onto the lathe. By using the cold jaws, I can mount the rings directly onto the lathe and flatten them with a pretty decent speed. For the tool, I used a square carbide rougher and I just took really light passes, checking a few times with a straight edge to make sure that I wasn't putting a taper on the part. Now, after flattening one side, I flipped the ring and repeated the same process again. Now, I really thought this was going to be a lot harder than it was to get a flat face, but that square cutter really did make it easy to keep things flat, as you can actually see a shoulder if you're starting to go off on a bit of an angle, so really easy to catch and adjust if needed. Now, the rings came off pretty damn good to begin with, but to make sure they were properly flat, I decided to lap the rings on a flat surface, so I went down to the shop, grabbed some sandpaper, and stuck it to my workbench, which is a surface that I know is flat. This step was probably not strictly necessary, Necessary, but I really didn't want to take any chances with this thing exploding so a good glue joint is vital and as you'll see in a moment there was some low spots that could have potentially caused issues so eh, I think it was worth it. Now when lapping it's good practice to work the ring in one direction rotating it every few strokes to ensure you're taking up a uniform amount all over and don't end up with a wedge shaped ring. To make it easier to keep track of my progress, I added pencil marks onto the faces, and as you can see, these are those low spots I was talking about. I'm glad I did this, but in reality, I do think the glue would have filled those gaps just fine. But hey, I'm a perfectionist, and if it takes an extra 15 minutes, it takes an extra 15 minutes. Now, the thinner rings are a little bit different. They're a bit too thin to safely sit in the cold jaws. I mean, I could use a spacer, but I don't really want to do that. So instead, I attempted to try and do it entirely on the workbench by lapping it. And this worked okay, but towards the end, I can tell you, I was starting to get pretty damn tired. This was essentially the same process as before, but because there was a lot more material to remove, I just used 60 grit paper initially before switching to the 80 grit, which is a step I didn't have to do before. Three out of 10 is what I'd rate this method. I'd definitely be looking for a better way in the future. And there we go, we've got a full set of flat rings that are ready to glue into the bowl blank, so let's get into that. Gluing on the blank is pretty self-explanatory. You put some glue on the stack of rings and clamp it together, right? Mm, kind of. One thing about glue is it makes things pretty slippery, and as alignment of these rings is really important for the final product, I decided I'd glue it up in a few stages to give myself the best chance of getting it just right. For the glue, I'm just using Type Bond Original once again. It's my go-to, and as it's the most rigid setting flavor of the three Type Bonds, I think it's a pretty good choice for this application. And for this first glue up, I split the bowl into three sections to glue those together individually. Now, I was careful to orient each ring so that they were clocked in a way that each joint would overlap a full segment, and this should result in a running brick sort of pattern in the final piece, and I think it should look pretty damn spiffy. Now, for the clamps, I went down to the shop and stole this display box of spring clamps and ran away before Alex, our customer service guru, had the chance to yell at me for ruining the display. While the first set of rings dried, I remembered I needed a plug on the bottom of the bowl to give me a way to hold it into the chuck. So I turned down a puck, added a tenon, and quickly added that to the bottom stack so that nobody would be none the wiser to my little oversight here. After about 45 minutes, I removed the clamps of the two bottom rings and glued those two layers together, being sure to orient the joints just as before. 45 minutes after that, I did the exact same thing for the last layer and called it a day, allowing it plenty of time to dry properly. And that's left us with this, our blank all glued up, and I think it looks pretty good. Everything looks to be nicely aligned, and I think it should be pretty balanced when we spin it up. So I guess that means there's nothing left to do other than to mount this on the lathe and get turning. That's kind of exciting. Now, that's gonna be the subject of the next video, but there is a few things I've learned getting up to this stage that I think is worth discussing. Now, the first thing that I learned was when cutting the segments, I was just cutting 12 segments of the same size, then increasing the spacing of the stop block and hoping for the best. But there is actually a formula I could have been following to get a more accurate sizing. 
Now the formula is really simple. It's the diameter that you want times pi, 3.14 is close enough, divided by the number of segments. That should give you the segment length on the outer edge. Alternatively, there is just a bunch of calculators online that will do this for you and you can bring it up on your phone and kind of do it on the fly. The second thing I want to mention is the width of the segments. Now these narrow strips were kind of a waste of time. They were fine for these smaller diameter rings and they will be put to use eventually. But the thing I didn't consider is as you increase the diameter of the ring, the effective wall thickness that you can get out of the rings gets thinner and thinner and it essentially makes them useless. Now the solution to this would just be increase the number of segments of the ring. So say you go from 12 to 18 or 24, but I didn't think about this at the time and I ended up wasting a bit of time cutting and gluing these smaller pieces to then only later realize that I wasn't gonna be able to use them. It's all part of the process and I learned from it, so still a win in my book. Now the last thing I wanna bring up is this. If you've been thinking about getting into segmented turning but keep putting it off because it seems like it's just too much work or it's gonna to be too difficult to do it, it's actually a really enjoyable process and once you get in the swing of it, it really doesn't take that much time at all. You really don't need a table saw to do it. I think I've proven that. And as long as the stock that you're working with is dressed all round with parallel faces, getting accurate segments is not actually all that hard if you have a good way of keeping your saw nice and square. I mean, the jig I made took all of two minutes to make and it worked flawlessly for all of this. Now, of course, I am saying all of this before I've actually completed this project, so my opinion could change after this thing explodes off the lathe and smashes me in the face, but so far it's been really enjoyable and I'm looking forward to doing a lot more segmented work in the future. All right, guys, that is it for this video. Remember, like always, links to all the products shown in this video will be down in the description below. And if you enjoyed this video, hit that thumbs up button and maybe subscribe if you haven't already, because that's the best way to stay up to date with all of our content. Cool, that's it. I'll see you next time when this thing is actually gonna be finished on the lathe. That is, assuming it doesn't explode. See you guys.